ADHD and time blocking. Does this even work and how? Well, yes, it does work. How? In a bit different way than the neurotypical, because as a neurodivergent person, you are wired differently. So any time management technique would work for you as well but in a slightly twisted way. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an evidence-proof technique that works for ADHD people when they want to optimize their time management. And we're gonna call it time blocking, but you're gonna see how it's a bit different than what you expect. And it has four main components, but before we dive into that, let's clarify a couple of things. For example, the essence of time blocking is a to-do list. And why does a to-do list even help ADHD people? Well, for two main reasons. First, is that you get to visualize your tasks. When you have your things written down in front of you, they are less abstract, they're less ambiguous. And just about anybody struggles with ambiguity, but for ADHD people, this is particularly frustrating. So if you can reduce the ambiguity and increase the objective, factual, real things in front of you, such as your tasks, then you increase your chances to execute them. And the second way how having a to-do list helps you as an ADHD person is that you don't have to remember things. And I'm not sure anymore who said that, but there's this quote how your brain is for thinking and creating and not for remembering things. And I love this mindset because first of all, as an ADHD person, you're either frequently distracted by different moods and thoughts and ideas, or you're just a normal human living in this information overload of society. In fact, our brains do not develop so quickly biologically as our industrial revolution develops. So in a way, our brains are not fit to perform that well in the society if we build, because the information we're expected to process per day is beyond words. So if you rely on your memory in order to be productive, you're likely to fail. Classical time blocking versus the ADHD way. In a very quick way, why classical time blocking doesn't work is because as an ADHD person, you have different levels of dopamine per day. And it's very difficult for you to decide how you're gonna feel tomorrow, at what time of the day you'll be able to execute what kind of tasks. Because classical time blocking looks something like this. You have your calendar and you have every day scheduled per task and within a certain time frame. And the classical time blocking that you can learn a lot about from somebody like Ali Abdal, for example, can really help you with productivity, absolutely. But for ADHD people, it's extremely difficult to stay true to such rigid structure in the long term because as somebody who thrives on challenge, interest, and deadlines, having such a rigid time blocking schedule will either bore you to death or make you very miserable or both. All right, after all this, let's now talk about time blocking, but the ADHD way. So the time blocking will start with a to-do list. And the first step that you have to take is decide between digital device and pen and paper. Personally, I would advise you to use pen and paper for optimal results because having it written down on paper with your own hand, with your own handwriting in front of your own eyes gives more sense of ownership and then you're more committed because it's your own thing. Also, writing things down is more complicated than writing on a device where everything is so quick and easy. And there's a lot of research in psychology showing that we value things more when we put more time and effort in them. So if you write your to-do list on a paper, given how much time and effort you invested in it, you will value that to-do list much more than the quick and easy digital device. And the second point why I would recommend you to use pen and paper is that it will actually allow you to disconnect a little bit from your phone because then you can literally put it away, have the to-do list with you on a paper, walk around and do your stuff and just really, well, pay attention to this. I find it very difficult to have the phone even if I stop my notifications and yet focus on only my productive things, I'll be tempted to check my Instagram, maybe my email, maybe my WhatsApp. I don't believe in willpower. I don't think you can achieve that much just because you're very self-disciplined. I think you can achieve a lot more when you make the success easier than when you keep it complicated and try harder to overcome yourself. Like, 
It's not worth the struggle. Keep the temptation away from you and then just focus on what is in front of you. The second step will be to decide whether you would like to plan daily or weekly. And here is where I recommend you have this combination of devices and pen and paper, because I would say for the long-term commitments that you have for weeks and months that are planned in advance, yes, have the calendar, use your device, but for the daily tasks, sit down in the morning and think about what would you like to do today? What would you like to achieve today? What would you like this day to look like? And then make the list. Because first of all, this is a lot more accurate than trying to plan it in advance. But second of all, this is how you start the day in a lot more intentional way because you're spending those 10-15 minutes literally designing your day versus running on autopilot hoping that the right mood will hit you at the right time and you achieve your stuff. Like, honestly, I've never seen a sustainable, productive technique that relies on hope. So, okay, you may be one of those extreme cases that can achieve that. But if you're one of the 99% of the population on this earth, don't rely on hope. Just sit down, think about yourself, think about your goals, think about your responsibilities, write it down, and then go ahead and kick ass. Step number three is color grading. And for this to make sense, I have to give you a little bit of a story. So when I was doing my psychology education, I was very stubborn and I was very determined to finish quicker. So I took two years for one. I was studying in the Netherlands where we have four exam sessions, which means you have seven weeks of lectures and then you have exams. In my case, I had twice as many because I was squeezing two years into one. And I was so stubborn to succeed that I was like, you know what? I will definitely use some time management techniques. I need to organize myself. I need to do something extreme. And this is the mindset that really helped me. Realizing that I'm doing something extreme this year is like nothing else. Therefore, I will be doing something like never before. And to me, this is important to also tell you and encourage you to recognize time management techniques very often for ADHD people are only possible in the short term. I know you'd like to hear that you can start something and execute it forever, but when it comes to structuring your studying, structuring your days and having time blocking, even when you modify it, usually it will last until you achieve your goals. But it's very difficult to have that kind of living every single day just because it's good. ADHD people have that difficult relationship with dopamine and with attention, with executive functions. It's unless you are medicated all the time to like regulate it, then I would just advise you, use techniques when needed and then keep parts of them for the rest of your life, okay? But do not expect from yourself to be that perfect productive person 24-7. All right, and after this little lecture on healthy productivity, let's go into my color grading. So I use four categories. Red was for responsibilities, yellow for chores, and I'm gonna explain the difference. Green was for it would be nice if I could, and then purple was for things that make me happy. Now, first of all, what is the difference between category red responsibilities and a category yellow chores. Responsibilities in red are things that are somehow connected to another human being. Your appointments at the dentist, your work meeting, even your appointments and dates with your spouse, those are things that you have committed to and they are involving another person. You must do them, otherwise you're gonna lose money, respect, relationships. You're gonna lose something because this other person is somehow involved. This is red. Yellow on the other side is chores that you better do, but nobody will come and knock on your door if you don't do it. For example, going to the groceries, that's a chore. Cleaning your house, that's a chore. Paying your rent is also a chore as long as you don't overdo your rent day. But whether you're going to do it on Monday or Tuesday usually doesn't matter. Whether you're going to do it in the morning or in the evening doesn't matter. Chores that are not exactly specified in terms of time and another person, yellow. Green again is, it would be nice if I could. For example, cooking is a nice thing to do. It's not the end of the world if you don't do it, but it would be nice if you could 
cook instead of having a sandwich. So having those healthy behaviors listed in front of you not only encourages you to do it, but it helps you recognize when you don't have them. Because now that I'm talking about this, you may find out that it's very difficult for you to find green items to add on your to-do list, which is a signal that you should be paying more attention to those little improvements that you could do for yourself. And category number four was purple, things that make me happy. And here we have to explain a few things. First, it doesn't need to be purple. Actually, in general, I'm using color grading because I'm a very visual person. But if you instead prefer other types of categorization, let's say you are more geeky, you can use the Harry Potter houses, for example. Anything that will keep you entertained because your ADHD brain will fail to follow if it's not entertained. So you take the technique and you make it fun for you if you are to stick with it. And the second important thing about this category is that you should choose at least one purple item per day and that thing should be not hurtful to you. And pay attention, being not hurtful is not the same as being healthy. Very often I hear those like used interchangeably and I'm just so fed up with it. We're not robots. That's not our goal. Our goal is just to feel well and to achieve things that matter to us. So something that is hurtful to you, for example, is to drink all day. Yeah, alcohol hurts you, okay. But scrolling on Instagram, for example, for an hour, does it hurt you? It's arguable. If it's during the day and it doesn't affect your sleep, if it's like between tasks and you're having your alone time for an hour even, having your coffee and just scrolling and depending also on your content, like for example, in my case, most of my content that I'm fed up by the algorithm on Instagram is actually educational. I love to watch things about physics and psychology or space and I learn from those things. Also, I have a bunch of cat videos. They make me laugh. But if you find yourself indulging into this for hours and hours, then of course that will be hurting you. So use your common sense to make the difference between hurting and being healthy. It's okay if the things that make you happy are not necessarily healthy. That's fine. You are allowed. Just avoid the hurting things because again, the goal is to feel well. Now I'm going to show you real quick some example of all this. So for example, during that period of my life, I obviously had lectures and I had to read chapters for my exams. And here you might be surprised to see going to the gym in purple, but honestly, I'm having the hyperactivity type of ADHD. I find it difficult to stay still and studying or working on a desk just drives me nuts. I need to move, but I also live oftentimes in countries where it rains all the time and my spirit animal is cat. I do not want to get wet. So going to the gym actually is something I very often look forward to do. Also, it's my time when I allow my brain to be as silly and as not focused as it wants to be. So it's like playtime. Like I go there, I just do random things without any routine and I allow my brain to be. Final step number four is actually the thing that gets this technique the closest to time blocking. So this is how a classical time blocking would look like. You have the exact time, the exact day, the exact activity. Again, very unsustainable for ADHD people. But I highly recommend you that besides using whatever it takes to make the color grading fun, also, try to be a bit intentional with what time of the day you're going to do certain things. Because if you leave cognitively heavy tasks for later in the day, there is a higher chance that you're not going to do it. So I think about this a bit like in Netherlands and Belgium, for example, when you're trying to book a train ticket, the app usually gives you options for like morning, uh, noon or evening uh, trains. And you kind of like set up this filter in advance so that you see the trains in certain category of the day. And I kind of do the same with my tasks. I'm like, okay, this is like morning, mm, afternoon, evening. And of course it's flexible. That is the beauty of having a to-do list. Once you have the objective task, in front of you. And I actually like to call them items because psychologically, if I call it items, it puts less stress on it versus task because task to me sounds very corporative and I'm like, mm, I don't like it. But okay, I have the visual items in front of me and to me they're like blocks and they're in different colors. So I kind of like could move them around, you know, and this is the flexibility I need. I may not do it because I would try to stick with like the categories of morning, afternoon and evening. But the fact that I could 
could and if something pops up I could just take this and move it here that thought that autonomy that flexibility makes it more realistic to me to keep up with this technique and I highly recommend you experiment with this as much as possible until you find your way to do it the way exists and oh my gosh this is the way I cannot even say that phrase without thinking about the Mandalorian at this point but nevertheless the point here is that I want to encourage you stop trying to copy paste a technique and when it doesn't work you will blame yourself for being too lame to use it or the technique being too broken and inefficient neither is the truth you just have to tweak things into your own way of living Thank you for watching guys. I hope this video helped you and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.